Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brew House Art Studio. And today we are going to be uh, going over something that has been requested in the comment section many, many times, and that is how do I put lights and shadows in my scene? How do I do it? I'm sure a lot of you already know how to do this, but uh, I'm just going to show you what I do. Uh, it's just, just something that I like. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my elements and I'm going to grab a plane. The, uh, there we go. Plane. I'm going to drag this into my scene. Actually, before I drag that in the scene, because if I just drag it into the scene, it's just going to land and then I have to go and I have to move it. It's just kind of a pain. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, hit control two and split my panes and then I'm going to hit control W. By the way, I'm using Maya hotkeys. Uh, control W and I'm going to put it in the schematic view because I really like using the schematic view. I know some people hate it, but I absolutely love it. That's it's my, it's my jam. So I'm going to drag it into the schematic view and this is going to put it at world zero and I don't have to type in a bunch of numbers. So now I'm going to create a second plane. This is going to be my shadow plane. I'm going to drag that in here and I'm going to parent it to my first plane. And I'm going to rename the shadow. 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 And then I'm going to take the first plane and I'm going to scale that up uh, to a value of five. And that will actually encompass the entirety of the grid. Uh, and now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start making the light rig. Oh, and by the way, there's a reason why you can't, you don't have to have a shadow plane. It's just something that I like to do, and I'll just I'll kind of show you why here in a second, hopefully, if I remember. Um, I like to have my shadows separate from the, the actual plane itself. Uh, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a marker, and I'm going to drag a marker into my scene, which is right there, and his feet. And I'm going to go to my properties, and I am going to go to my marker settings, and I'm going to switch it from being, being a cube and you can make it a circle, you can make it a square, you can do whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to make it a square because my root node here is is a um, kind of circular. So I want it to be a little bit different. So I'm going to add that and I'm going to scale this out. I'm going to I'm going to make it just yeah, a little bit bigger. Make it about that big. And then I'm going to change the color from red to something else. Red to, let's do yellow, because why not? Yep, yellow like the sun. Uh, I'm going to go back to my asset browser, and I'm going to go to my lights. And if here's a trick for you if you don't know this already. Uh, if you, I, get a, I have to create four lights, so I can either drag these in one at a time, or if I double click on light, I get a little cross and then I'm able to go click, 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 click four, four times, four shadows. And now I'm going to rename my lights. So let me start with the first one. Call this main. It's going to be my main light. That's like the sunlight. Light two. That will be my rim light. Oops. Rim. light this will be my backlight back and then I have a fill light fill light and then I'm gonna just parent these to the marker and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start placing these in my scene maybe put one up over here like that uh, this will be my this is my sunlight so I'm kind of let's kind of get it up high in the sky right about there uh, next I'm gonna grab the rim light I'm gonna pull it up about mid height to my character or my scene and then I'm gonna drag it right out to the side back light I'm gonna maybe pull it maybe about to there and I'm gonna go back here somewhere so I kind of if I look at it from the top I kind of have this Oh, see how I'm flipping? And in case you guys run into this and you don't know how to fix it, uh, you can go to your camera's producer perspective, 
and look for the far clip beam plane, which is right here. And I just add another zero. And now I can zoom out further. It's a light main, so, oh, try that again. There we go. So you kind of, you can kind of see the kind of the pattern. It's just, you know, super basic lighting placement. And finally, the fill light, this is bounce light off the ground. I'm going to drop it down here below the floor. It's just going to be shining up at our, at our scene. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my lights. I think I'll do this in the navigator. So I'm going to select main light and I'm going to leave the intensity at 100. I'm going to change the color, however, to being closer to a sunlight. So just put a hint of yellow in there. Uh, I try not to go too crazy. Uh, now I'm going to do the rim light. I'm going to give that a, a blue hue. Really, you can pick any colors you want. These are just the colors I like to use. And I'm going to decrease this by 25%. Oh, not 25, 25%, 75. The value of 75. Then we go to my light back. And I'm going to give it a red hue. And decrease that by another 25%. So that gives it a value of 50. And then my fill light, I'm going to um, give it kind of a brownish color. I used to work on the, uh, or like back in the day, I got my start on the Jimmy Neutron TV series, and they had this as their kind of their color for their bounce light uh, in their default scenes. So it's just kind of where I got it from. Um, and another 25%, so 25. So, Main light is 100, 75, 50, and then 25. Uh, but now we need to get some shadows in there. So I'm going to go back over to my asset browser. And I'm going to go to my elements, uh, let's see, shading elements, shaders. I'm going to look for live shadow right here. I'm going to click and I'm going to dra drag the live shadow right onto my shadow plane. And I'm going to replace all. This is replacing everything. You know, It'll, it'll make more sense here in a second. Um, but you can see that I've got all these shadows now, all these lights are casting shadows and they're all choppy, so how do we fix this? Well, go over to your navigator, go to your shaders, uh, select your live shadow, and we only want it to cast shadow from the main light source. Uh, so I'm gonna go to light main, I'm gonna select that, and now only the main light here is casting a shadow. So if I move it around, you can see it's moving that shadow. Uh, I'm then going to switch it from uh, projective shadow to opaque planar shadow. And you can see it's made it nice and crisp. Nice crisp shadow. Uh, I'm also going to decrease the shadow's intensity from 100% to 70%. Make, make it a little bit nicer, in my opinion. Usually shadows are not 100% uh, dark. Uh, and there we go. We have a basic lighting setup. Uh, the other one last thing I think I want to do is I, I want to be able to go underneath my character and look up and not have uh, not, not see this. So the way I handle this is I select I'm going to select both of these plane objects and go to properties. We go down to viewer options, and under viewer options, uh, you see calling both. I'm going to say outer. So now they're only calling on, on the outer, but not the inner. So if I go underneath the character now, uh, I can see, I can look at them, I can look up. It's really nice. Uh, now, kind of back to why I separate my shadow out, um, is it is an invisible. Uh, plane now, so to speak. The only thing you see is the shadow. Uh, and so let's say you had a box in your scene or some 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 surface that you wanted him to touch or maybe had a more elaborate scene. You could duplicate this out. In fact, let me go ahead and grab something from uh, Asset Browser Elements. Let's see. Primitives Cube. Just drag this in here real fast. So 
let's say you have this surface that you had to interact with and you wanted to throw a shadow on here well you could add a shadow to this you could through just many many different ways you can do it but sometimes it's nice to just be able to quickly just uh, copy and paste paste it where to paste it paste it over here it's nice to kind of paste that shadow and just kind of move it up and, and over and, and get it lined up at the top of the box like that That's just something I do sometimes. Uh, I mean, you don't have to do it this way. There are other ways you can do this. This is just how I do it on occasion, is uh, throwing something in there like that. Let me go ahead and get rid of these. Don't need those. Uh, we now have, like I said, we now have a light control. In fact, let me rename this to light control. Uh, we can now move this around. You can rotate it however you need it, uh, and it's just uh, just nice to have. It makes a nice scene to work in. Uh, now, a lot, the next question I know people are going to ask is, can you script this? And yes, you can script this. If I, and if I knew Python scripting, I would I would show you how to script it. Uh, there are people out there who know how to do this. I'm sure if you look it up, you'll find them, and uh, you'll you can figure out how to. How to make this a little more automated, but I'm going to show you the poor man's hack, the the non <laughs> the non programmer tools person hack uh, to set this up. So what I'm going to do is now that I've created this, I don't want to have to create this over and over again every time I I, I create a scene of characters, and I don't have to do this over and over again. So I only want to do this is hit this one time. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab uh, er, uh, my elements, my two planes, and my my light control rig in lights and I'm going to go file uh, save selection and now I'm going to go find a place to save it so I'm going to I'll just save it right here I'm going to call this lighting rig and I'm going to call this lighting rig and I'm going to save that I don't need uh, the take because there's no animation on anything. So I'm just going to hit save. And now if I go open that file up. Nope, don't need to save that. And I can open that. Uh, there is my, my whole setup right there. Uh, if I go over to my shaders, I can see my life shadow is still here. So if I do something like drag a spear into my scene, uh, you can see that it's it's casting shadows. Uh, now here, now here's a little tip of the day. This is a tutorial, uh, more than a tip of the day, but I, I have a little tip of the day for you. So you can actually go to your asset browser and you can create a path to uh, the sliding rig. So just come over here and you can say add favorites path and navigate through this horrible Windows interface, which whoever invented this, I hope they got fired because this is horrible, uh, and go find where you saved that file. Uh, tutorials, yep, there. Lighting rig there, light rig, okay, so open that up. And it's now added the folder to Lighting Rig. And if I select it, you can see I have an FBX right here. Um, in fact, actually, here, here's, another, here's another little tip. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to angle this camera maybe like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the file and I am going to click this little button here that says render thumbnail. I'm going to render thumbnail and it's going to create a thumbnail of what I'm looking at. I like that. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to hit save, file save. Now if you come back over here to the asset browser, I'm going to just uh, 
go over to my templates and we go back to my lighting rig and you can see it's actually created a little thumbnail for your FBX. So if I go someplace else like these previs, you can see they're just the default FBX icon. But uh, you can save out a little thumbnail if you want. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of this. Don't need it. Oh, and something I almost forgot about. Uh, I don't want to accidentally select things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my lights and my plane. I'm going to leave, I'm not going to select the light control. I'm just going to select the plane, the shadow, and, and these lights. I'm going to go over to my properties. I'm going to go to viewer options and there's a little tick box for enable selection. I'm going to check that and that's going to disable my selection. So now I can't accidentally select I guess you can still select lights. I take that back. Okay, apparently you can still select lights, uh, but you can't select the plane. So when you're trying to, let's say, select this uh, light control, you're not accidentally grabbing the, the planes. Uh, another thing that you can do to make life nice for yourself is you, under lights, you can actually create a folder. So I'm gonna insert folder, uh, just leave the name light. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it default lights folder. I'm gonna drag my lights in there. Uh, you can come over to groups if you want your environment to be in a group you can create a group uh, in fact i might as well do that for the heck of it enviro for short and I'm select this stuff and update so now if i wanted to show or hide i can do it do it like that i can also turn off picking Actually, you know, I don't like that exactly. So let me select this and deselect the light control because I um, I want to still be able to select that. And I want to I'm going to go ahead and update this. All right. So now the planes and the lights are in my group, but not the light control. So if I turn off pick, yeah, can't pick the lights anymore. Can't pick the plane anymore. But I can still pick the, the light control. So I'm all right. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna go reload up my last file. So there's my character. Now I want to get my lights into my scene. So I'm gonna go back to my asset browser. I'm gonna go right to my light rig, which is right here, selected. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this right into here, and I'm gonna merge. And my lights are now in my scene. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So they say. Um, yeah, am I think, am I forgetting anything? I think, I think that's about it. I, it's pretty simple. Um, and I hope this helped you guys out. Um, again, uh, I appreciate feedback. Your feedback helps me, it makes me want to do more of these things to help, uh, bolster the motion builder community because motion builder is such an amazing tool. And I, I, I think everybody should be using it, my, my own opinion. But um, anyway, uh, if you like this, please share. Um, hit that like button. Uh, leave a comment if you have a, a tip or a trick that you like, or if there's something you want to know more about, or if you have a question or how to, how do you do this? Uh, leave, leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer it. And coming up, I'm going to be doing some more tutorials for you. I'm going to do my character uh, creation tool, uh, tool, my, my character creation tutorial uh, of kind of how I set my characters up now. I've, I've got a tutorial on it, but uh, I, I have a few little things that I, I do now that are a little bit different uh, than I do than I did back then. So I'm going to uh, be doing character character rigging 2.0, I guess is what we'll call it. So. There's going to be some good things coming, coming in the future. Uh, so anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and uh, happy animating.